go. Uh, so this episode is actually all about, um, it's one of a three-part series, isn't yes. it? Yes. All about how Siobhan came to opening the shed, and a lot of it was based on her personal experiences. And um, today we're going to be talking about, oh, here's a little friend. For everyone just listening, we've got Abby jumping up on Siobhan's lap. Uh, so this episode is all about, uh, I guess, to put it bluntly, your um, experiences with anxiety and depression. Yeah, yeah. Which is a weird thing for you to say, because when I first met you, <laughs> you didn't even know what they were. No, I had no idea what anxiety was. And then I feel like I came to Australia and everyone like threw the word around. I know, Like, I know. I'm anxious. Oh, that makes me anxious. And I'm like, what do they mean? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> take people through it. So... I mean, how did you how did you move from a place of not knowing what anxiety was to experiencing it yourself, and then moving through a, a period of kind of existential anguish? Yeah, um, I can't even think. Oh well, it obviously started in when we moved to Bali. Um, Abby, <laughs> I'm so distracted by the. Day. I know. You lie down. Abby, yeah. lie down. She might just jump down. Come on, lie down. Don't jump <laughs> on that microphone. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I obviously started off when I, I had it when I was in Bali, but I would never say, like, at that time I was, like, anxious or going through, like, some sort of depression yeah. or anything. Um, but we were in a job working in Bali where I literally discovered at the end of it that it was because Don't let I... let jump on the microphone, sorry. I literally <laughs> discovered at the, at the end of it that I had no, um purpose I'd say or no meaning or I wasn't like in control of anything or in charge of anything yes. so it to put it like simply we were probably living like a really pleasureful lifestyle with nothing to like no responsibility that's probably the best way of saying it and yeah that's how it all kind of spiraled I guess yeah, yeah. so just give, give some give some context to everyone so you and I moved to Bali yeah and we uh, took on a job uh, to a co- excuse me we took on a coaching role mm-hmm. over there and then we kind of found that it wasn't for us mm-hmm. very quickly and that's and then the the thing that triggered it especially the anxiety was a motorcycle or a motorbike crash I should yeah. say yeah yeah so I'm like a huge believer in like signs from the universe or just um, listening to your gut and trusting your gut and I guess we started the job and I knew immediately like what we got told the job was was absolutely nothing compared to the job I was in so in my head I was like working my way up into like a bigger and a better role but um, as we got the job it was actually the complete opposite so my role kind of went from I was in a probably a really good role to going into a role where um, I had no responsibility or less responsibility and yeah and it kind of made my head be like well what am I doing here like I don't feel like everyone else is doing everything for me like I wasn't kind of in charge of what I was doing um yeah and I guess like from that like there was just signs of like well no one's like listening to you you're not getting anywhere you've got no you've actually got no role you're kind of just there to like listen and do what other people are saying like I had no say in absolutely anything as a part of a team which was like really really shit as people will know if you're in a team that, that you have no say in it and yeah so I just kept getting these signs but I kind of stayed in the job which at the time was really bad me and Tom have discussed this but I kind of stayed in the job because we had it together and I wanted to like make you happy and I loved being in Bali I loved the lifestyle in Bali but like my universal size was like just getting worse and worse the job was getting worse um the people around me were getting worse um yeah and then as it just got on I was just getting really really sad really down I didn't really want to go out or do anything I and kind of we, was... we certainly didn't have it together either we were really struggling at that time in our yeah, relationship yeah like, there was a lot of clashing a lot of fighting yeah um, just but because yeah because of the changes and because we had no responsibility so yeah. our head was just left to be like 
like what the fuck are we doing yeah so in the um and i think what would have made it even harder for you if i could just butt in really quickly is that you'd had such an incredible experience living and working in bali the first time round. Yeah, so it was so yeah. difficult to contrast that yeah. with all of the negativity that was coming up in this yeah because i obviously had an expectation and when your expectations don't get met this is why you should have no expectations yeah but when they don't get met like you can fall into that anxiety or depression which i learned really quickly um so then it got so bad that um yeah we were driving home one night and i was driving um we had no helmets on which i absolutely wouldn't advise now if you <laughs> took the crash to <laughs> tell me that i was driving the motorbike you were on the back um and we were actually going at like a reasonable reasonable pace quite slow we were at, yeah we were we were going slow um we turned a corner into some spill oil and water and the the bike spun out of control into oncoming traffic luckily we were so lucky there was a break in the traffic which if you've been to Bali before you'll know there is never a freaking break in the traffic <laughs> um, oncoming cars and I just remember the bike spinning spinning me trying to stop it and like putting my hand out um, to stop the car on the oncoming traffic and then I just remember headbutting the concrete and the bike landing on my leg and I couldn't move for a split second but I don't know what happened and I was on my feet being like are you okay are you okay to you um, and then I just looked and just saw blood everywhere and then that's when I kind of collapsed. So my adrenaline and everything initially got me up. Um, and then I kind of just, yeah, that, and then that was the start of what you would call me being depressed, but I would, I had no idea. And you didn't even tell me, like, I had no idea I was depressed, but I think you and like a close friend of ours was like, yeah, she's depressed, but I wouldn't say, I yeah. obviously wouldn't say at the time I was, but I, looking back, I 100% was. Yeah, well, at the time, I had experienced both... I had previously experienced both anxiety and depression. Mm. I would also studied it. And then, obviously, now it's something that you have studied and experienced. Yeah. That's why, in retrospect, you can be like, okay, that's definitely what I was going Mm -hmm. through. And it was just a big roadblock in life. Like, your sense of identity had completely been taken from you. Yeah. um, Which is obviously awesome given that you're a different person you're oh happier God, than yeah, you I'm are so now i'm so glad i went through it at but the time obviously not but yeah. yeah depression is just a personal grievance because you know the goals your goal directed behavior is no longer leading you to a place that would you know as you previously thought would fulfill you yeah topple that on with a genuine physiological uh, trauma mm-hmm. you know with the with the bike accident and i remember that like i remember the foot you jumped up straight away your head hit the ground there was blood and a fat nose it and i just looked at it, i was freaking out because obviously i'd hate to see you like that mm. and then when you found out i was okay this is probably another reason why i love you because <laughs> you the testament to you is you jumped up you copped all of the brunt hello abby <laughs> You, you copped all of the force because you were in the front of the bike and I was sitting in the back with my fat ass. I just, I just came off the bike. Yeah, you I were was fine. fine. I was yeah. totally fine. You head smashed the ground. You looked at me to make sure I was okay. Once you found out I was okay, then you fainted. Yeah, pretty much. And we, we all picked you up and took you to the side and there were these incredibly wonderful local Balinese people oh my just God, they were putting amazing. true eucalyptus leaves all over yeah. you and it was, it was quite incredible. But yeah. yeah, what came after that was a period of deep rest depressed yeah, you know yeah. depression well yeah so obviously i was in the um in the hospital and they were so amazing as well and their advice was like you can't have a shower because obviously the water in bali is not the cleanest so your your cuts might get infected your wounds. so they're like don't shower like try not to get it in the sun like basically just stay indoors so they were their advice was like a couple of weeks and i was like oh yeah cool whatever but i was indoors to the point that i was so like just so disabled in my body that i couldn't even turn the tv on and when i turned it on i was just like turned it off because i couldn't even be bothered watching it so i was literally alone with my thoughts in a room in bali in like the middle of nowhere couldn't shower couldn't move couldn't do anything um so i was just yeah i was just in my head that whole time and then I think it was afterwards when I could move then I experienced like my first panic attack so this was like more signs from the universe um yeah that was I think that's what led into it so those two weeks I was just I don't even I can't even say what the thoughts were I just physically and mentally felt so flat but I just thought it was after the accident but in reality it was everything else that was going on around me and I just I had no idea until the the first panic attack yeah and it's important to 
um, just to provide people with kind of an answer, like a context is around why that happens so that it doesn't become like, you know, what if that happened to me sort of thing? Yes, Abby, we know you're here. We know you're here. <laughs> you know, when, when we lose our, when like a goal is taken away from us or we, you know, come to realize that we're probably unable to attain that goal, mm. depending on how important that goal was to us is proportional to the degree to which we lose a sense of our identity because yeah. we are goal-directed animals you know well i just think if your gut is saying something or something doesn't feel right and you don't take action yes the app it'll get worse and worse and the signs will get worse or you'll yeah. keep getting told something until you fucking do something like it took for me to fall off my bike and nearly kill two of us a panic attack and then a million panic attacks in one day for me to be like i need to get the fuck out of Bali in this job like yeah. that's what it took and how sad is that on myself that i didn't see the signs of being like you knew in the first couple of days of the job that this is 100% not for you. Like, why didn't I do anything about it? So for people listening, if they're getting these signs, like, fucking do something. Like, yeah. do something about it. It's crazy to think that I let that happen to myself. And I'm, like, actually, one, disappointed that I let it go that far. But two, I'm really happy because now I can help other people who are in these situations. Or um, it got me to where I am now, which like led me into breath work and obviously helping hold space for other people doing breath work yeah absolutely and the the anxiety which at the time you labeled a funny turn <laughs> well yeah let's talk about that well it was it was interesting <laughs> because i i came home one night and you didn't look right and you hadn't looked right for a couple of days and mm. you know so that was probably not incredibly surprising to me because you weren't in a good way no. but then you said oh you know today i had a funny turn and you never said that ever before. But I think we were like, you were like, oh, as usual, like, how was your day? And like, we were yeah. going on about it. Like, what did you get up to? I was like, getting on. And we were like making dinner. And we were about to have dinner, I think. Or yeah, no, I was, was before. Was... No, no, no. Yeah, you were preparing dinner. But yeah. I was just about to go to like boxing or something. That's right. So I was still going about my day. Yeah. Um, And you were just like, how was your day? And I was like, oh, I just had this like really funny turn. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you're like explain the funny turn and then I like explained it to Tom as like my mind was like racing and I needed to get out of the room and I was panicking and I was breathless and my heart was racing and then I had to like pace up and down and we were living in a villa at the time like obviously very lucky um and I was just pacing the villa until this weirdness went away and then it did it went away and then I like told Tom and then you said to me explained I think you had a panic attack and I was like I literally was like okay cool yeah (laughs) Went, mind. <laughs> yeah, went to boxing, drove to boxing, came home, um, and then we kind of discussed it a little bit more, I think, um, and then the next day was like fucking bingo, like one after the other, it was like panic attack, panic attack, and then when you try, and, which I didn't know, when you try and stop panic attacks, you get way more, so yeah. like, stop, 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 and then they, they would like come on really, really hardcore, and then the best advice I ever got was from you, it's like, um, when you're going through it make sure you can like feel see touch hear like use all your senses to kind of grind yeah. you and that helped me massively but fuck it didn't stop them eh? like I had so many and then the worst one I had was we went to where was it we went to? KL yeah Kuala Lumpur and we were in a shopping mall and this was when I was still going through the panic attacks and we went into this huge shopping mall and I literally within seconds I was like where's the exit where's the exit didn't know where it came from it was so sudden and you just had to like that was our day Was we went straight into a shopping centre for our first day in KL and I had to go home like we had to go back to the mm. um, hotel where we were staying and I just had to lie in bed because I knew that was like my safe space to not have panic attacks yeah that's right it was it was very interesting I don't even remember you saying anything I just remember you being completely uncommunicative and, and you know us kind of coming to the conclusion that you know, we sat down first and then it was very much like, hey, we just have to get out of here. Yeah. And there was something in there that mu- must have triggered you, mm. you know. It was, do, like, I don't, it was do being, we know? like, claustrophobic. Yeah. I just, I couldn't see the exit. Um, there was I no just, way out. No, there was no way out. So I just needed, fuck, it was such a weird feeling. Yeah, and that's when, you know, anxiety is really high because, God, how many times have you been in a shopping centre um, when you yeah, don't know I where know, the exit exactly. is? Hundreds of times. Yeah. But, you know, for whatever reason, when you, when you lose that goal-directed behavior, the world presents itself as incredibly unpredictable as well because Mm. you don't have a lane anymore. And then anxiety manifests because it's like, well, look at all these possibilities we have. It's very unpredictable. 
everything could be dangerous mm-hmm. and everything was dangerous as an associative mechanism works. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was a fascinating time. Like, we, we had been dating for, what, two years by that time? Yeah. A year and a half? Yeah, so, I think and, so. A year and a half, two years, yeah. Yeah, and we're unique in our relationship where we don't spend a day apart. Like, we're mm. attached to the hip, you Pretty and I. Much. Yeah, and um, it was very, it was a very weird, yeah, it was a very interesting time. Yeah, and, like, I didn't, and it's really, like, weird for me. Like, I didn't even want to, like, socialize, and you'd be like, oh, we're going to out for dinner with so-and-so tonight, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to go, but you're really good. And like, no, let's go. Like, come on, we're going to go out. Yeah. And, like, anything and everything. I just remember sitting at, like, tables for dinner and just, like, not talking. I could not talk. And then, yeah, got stuck into breath work. Well, then... Thankfully, the universe was like, we'll give you a break. And And then I discovered breath work. Why not? Abby's going to jump up again, just (laughs) for a little insight. (laughs) She'd probably hear me talking. (laughs) But yeah, it was, that was, that was the road to it. And you stumbled upon breath work um, by accident, really. Yeah, just, yeah, just asking one of the girls at the table what she did. Um, And it was, yeah, breath work. And then we got the class set up in the gym that we were working in and yeah did a class and then literally that was like that so when you do breath work you sometimes have like realizations or things coming through and that was the point that it was like get the fuck out of Bali you don't care what Tom says you don't care what anyone says you're doing it for you and you're making yourself happy and that's it and then I was like I'm, I'm going and then I said to you I was like I need to get the fuck out of Bali I'm done I yeah. need to go and that was it and la- that was literally from like one breathwork session, did two, my second breathwork session, never ever had a panic attack since, mm. not one. So did two breathwork sessions, panic attacks, depression, absolutely done. It completely changed my life. And that's not to say if you're going through them, it'll change yours course, too, course. but it completely changed mine. Hence why I'm like so in love with it and think that it can really help people wherever they're at. But yeah, and then they just... It was able to show you why you were anxious and depressed. Yeah, it showed me literally who I was and, yes. and the exact reasons why I was going through all that. And then I could actually <coughs> communicate them with you and be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, <laughs> and, and credit to you because so many people in the therapeutic um, process have all the awareness in the world, but they lack that ability to take action mm. because a- awareness precedes integration. And integration is just as, if not more important than the awareness component, because yeah. it's like, this, these are all the areas that, these are, these are all the areas in your life where you're falling into a big hole. Mm. You now know how to not fall into those holes, oh, yeah. but it's up to you not to do that. Yeah. And you were, and I was incredibly receptive to it because you were so lost and afraid for so long. And you saying, I need to get out of Bali was like the first, like, oh, here we go. Siobhan's back. Like she's got this yeah. desire and it, it worked. Yeah, I just remember, remember I went like home that night and I was like, it was just like a huge discussion. I was like, this is what came up in my breathwork session. You know. And that was it. I just literally, I think after that session, I didn't go back to work. Mm. Um, I was really like not good mentally, but I only realized that after the breathwork. Um, I didn't go back to work and then we just made plans to leave Bali and that yeah. was it. Went to Scotland. Yeah. And then that literally was a fucking game changer. Yeah. It changed a lot. It yeah. really changed a lot. Yeah. But yeah, the whole... But I didn't realise I was going through um, the anxiety and the depression until breath work and then looking back on all of it. So yeah, it was a really, really like bad but good time. <laughs> the, the most challenging, most wisdom gained experience. Yeah, but I feel always say to people, you have to go through the really shit times to get to the good times. And if you've not been through the shit times yet to understand that, like the people that have been through the shit times I should say will understand that because it always comes out comes out good yeah but yeah yeah, when we first met I was like what the fuck is anxiety (laughs) what is that literally (coughs) I was literally like the hard ass like yeah just get on with life no one in Scotland has anxiety (laughs) I just get on with it it was good for me. Like, I needed some yeah. of that at the time, too. You know, because you can ruminate. Yeah, but I didn't know. Like, you didn't even tell me I was going through that, and I didn't realize it until after breathwork. I was like, damn, that was sad. Well, I didn't I didn't say it because I felt that if I gave it a name and a label, yeah, the connotation really, would bring yeah. it down. Well, it did with the panic attack. Because yeah. remember, you were like, oh, I think you've had one. Yes. And then the next day, it was like, bang, 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 yeah. panic attack, panic attack. Like, one after the other. It fucking sucked. Yeah, and funnily enough... <laughs> 
the day that Siobhan had like four panic attacks was the day that I thought I took this really lovely photo of her and it was like my wallpaper yeah. on my phone for like <laughs> six months. I know. <laughs> and then you know, told me like six months after that, oh, by the way, that was like the worst day of my life. And I'm like, yeah, but you look great. <laughs> <like." laughs> I'm just like sad. I know, I know. Guys, well, that was, um, I guess, some of the background and the context as to how you found Breathwork and what yeah. was so important to and you. and I think it was just one of the reasons why breath work really helped me with the anxiety and Mm. the kind of depression and I feel like if I ever get that feeling of being anxious or falling into a panic attack which I'm so glad I don't anymore but if I get those feelings I will literally just do a breath work session or some breath work and it'll be gone just completely and utterly gone so yeah that's definitely a reason um why I freaking love it yeah if we can give you one takeaway from today and this is probably a really important takeaway is that exactly like Siobhan just said, there's always a reason why anxiety will manifest. Yeah. There's always a reason and that, and then knowing that reason means that you can integrate the change. So the, one of the worst things anxiety makes you feel like is that it makes you feel powerless. It makes you feel like it's happening to you and then there's nothing you can do to stop it. But as Siobhan just said, as, you know, especially within our own experience, it, it, it becomes prevalent for a reason. And when we find that reason, we can actually make changes so that um, you know, it's not as strong. And it can sometimes be as simple as just having too much coffee. You know, this doesn't have to be a massive thing. Oh, uh, yeah, but now have... I hear people saying it all the time. Like, oh, that makes me anxious or everything's anxious. I'm like, do you know what fucking anxiety is? Like, yeah. are you serious? Like, yeah. if there's things in your life that are making you anxious, I'm like, well, fucking change it. Or, <coughs> oh, my God, I've had too much coffee. It's like, well, don't do that next time. Like, yeah. fucking take action on what's going on. Absolutely. If it takes a while, fair enough. But, like, you know, work on that. Absolutely. And there are differences between, you know, having a bit of anxiety here and there and then having an anxiety disorder we probably say that you know if it's been strong (coughs) excuse me for more than a couple of weeks and it's starting to inhibit your normal functioning and way of life then it's probably something to really consider yeah definitely yeah guys we love you all bit of a takeaway bit of a throwaway line bonnie (laughs) what we should have like a throwaway line and as always I'm normally like on with this shit, but I'm normally like on with this shit. That could be it, but I just can't think of one right now. We can think of something. We'll think of something as they as they move. <laughs> yeah, done. All right, <laughs> catch you guys. Bye.